Hello everyone! Today's video is a 10,000 round review of my SP01. I'm going to take it apart because it needs to be clean. And doing so, I will cover all the parts that have been changed, damaged, enhanced, and I will tell you the result on the handgun. So first, I'm going to take it apart. If you want a detailed takedown, you just have to watch my other video. I'm going to put a link, which I'm going to put a link at the end. gun is a little marvel. If you are doing your part, it will get you there. It points naturally, it points very well. It goes from target to target naturally. Now if you don't get your fundamentals right, well you cannot blame it on the gun. So overall, this gun is fantastic. And to talk about the 10,000 round review of this gun, I took the gun apart. Well, it needed to be clean, but still, I'm going to go over the most critical parts and see where they are at and what I've done to my gun to make it such a great shooter. And we'll start with this slide. I added a fully adjustable rear sight and a fiber optic front sight. Now we can look at the uh, polishing, the natural polishing of the inside of the slide. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Very, very nicely polished. Everywhere there is contact. Metal to metal contact. Now, let's take a look at the barrel right away. And just to let you know, the barrel should be as black as this part here. But look at this. It has been polished everywhere. Again, except right here, which is okay. I don't know how it's done with the barrel bushing, but that's how it ended up looking like. The ramp did not really polish itself. I would have thought it would be a, a lot more polished. Just a little bit, I guess, where the bullets meet the ramp. Nothing really special inside. The extractor, nothing special. They do get a lot of crud there, so you do have to, well, I need a new brush, but you do have to scrape, scrape, scrape. That gets very dirty. I will say every 2,000 rounds you need to remove it. Now, the spring, the firing pin spring, nothing special. I got a few things to talk about. As you know, uh, that's my pet peeve. The Firing pin, this one is an upgraded firing pin. It's an extended firing pin. I forgot if I get it from uh, CZ Custom or uh, Cash and Gun Work. Uh, they both offer it and both probably very reliable. I replaced the firing pin roll pin because as uh, if you have seen my previous video and I will leave more links, um, they get damaged right here after uh, three, 500 rounds. So I replaced it with this one and this one's got maybe 9,500 around, and it's got just a little bit of marking, not much. Now, people are going to say, well, if this one does not get damaged, the firing pin will get damaged, and the firing pin has probably 8,000 around, and there is indeed a little bit of marking right here, but it's very, very a slight recess, so I would think you will have to wait about 20,000 rounds, and I will try to make another review by then, to probably being able to say you need to replace the firing pin. Still, 20,000 rounds is a lot of round, versus keeping the original and having to replace it constantly. 
before it breaks because if it is that damaged, it will break in contact with the firing pin. So that is a choice you have to make and I will think I made the right choice having a better raw pin and let my firing pin wear out with time. Let's go down to the side release lock. I don't know if you have seen my previous video, another one to relate to. I did polish the end here and it's still working very well. But this is the OEM. So this one's got 10,000 rounds through it. Some people say there is a breakage. Well, it must be a minority because this one is still cranking strong. I'm using the original recall spring. I tried to do some research about replacing it and I ended up being very happy with it, so I kept it. Now, this is the part that will need to be replaced. I don't know if you can see it, but it's warped. It's not straight anymore. So either going to order a new one or buy a stainless steel. It's not easy to see, but it is what? And then the end there, and I don't have a new one to look at, but it's, it's wearing out on the outside. That's what I think it is unless it came like this. Again, I don't have a new one to, to go by. And that is it for the side. Let's go with the inside of the frame. Again, nothing to talk about there. Just some polishing, very minimal. It's mainly on the rail, but very minimal. And the Trigger assembly, the sear block, nothing there, absolutely nothing. Well, again, sorry, there is something. Polishing. Through shooting, I didn't do any uh, manual polishing. Uh, the safety, because I do have a safety handgun. More polishing made by the rubbing of metal to metal. But I don't believe anything is out of spec. Trigger. Polishing on the outside here. More on one side than the other. But that's all right. The trigger bar. I mean, I know this can be a bit boring but maybe it will help you guys if you want to do some manual polishing. Look where it happens naturally and trying to replicate all this. The other side of the uh, safety. A lot of rubbing there. And I don't use my safety. So I don't know why we have some polishing there. Now, the Trigger return spring, still OEM. Again, a lot of people are talking about this spring breaking, and I don't know why, but mine is still going strong. I do have a replacement in case of. I've been, I've been worn, but no use for it. The rest are small parts which do not do much. I also put an extended Magazine release. Have seen some rubbing as well. The hammer. Normal on the side. That's how the this part is locked into the gun. By holding on each side of the of this space here. So normally you have some rubbing on each side. And here are where the, ah, here, just here, meet. 
the hammer. And so that's where you have some rubbing. All right. And finally, my OEM main spring or hammer spring. Uh, I wanted, like everybody else, a lighter trigger. So very early on, I replaced it to this blue hammer spring. So I went from this one, I think is about 20 pound to a 13 pound. And the trigger was very nice until my uh, Winchester primer did not ignite every time. It could have been the primer. I said, well, let's uh, put the original spring into the gun and I had no more issues. So I'm wondering if this aftermarket spring gets weak after about 10,000 rounds. So I'm back with the original and I know we research uh, the, 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 the lightest trigger as possible. But once the trigger has been smoothed out, because after 10,000 rounds, it is smoothed out, I put back this spring, and yes, I gain a little bit of pressure, but it's so smooth that it does not matter. I am somewhat of a believer that is not the poundage of the trigger that count the most, is how smooth the trigger, with no grittiness or, or stacking, and that a trigger can be heavier with a good smooth trigger and you will end up having a better shooting than with just a light trigger which by the way in 10,000 round I might have had five accidental discharge because the trigger was so light now it was always in a safe direction at, at the range but I did not expect that trigger to be so light and I had about five accidental discharge as with the heavier trigger uh, spraying, that does not happen. But that is it for this gun. So still my favorite of all the guns I've tried. One of maybe the, the weight, the feel of the metal uh, and double action, single action. I'm very well used to double action as doing competition. The first shot is always double action. And so I train a lot with double action and I've learned and I will say I am as good even sometimes even better with double action trigger than single action because when you pull that long pull yes you waste time yes it's harder but your hand has less chance of moving jerking as with the light trigger if you don't have the fundamental which that's why we compete, that's why we have to, to concentrate, to remember to have the fundamental right. You jerk because your body is anticipating a loud noise and a recoil. But with a double action, it seems like I am holding the gun better and so shooting a lot better. My CZ is now clean and rebuilt and I want to show you an update about the, uh, well, two of the three hacks I made on the gun. The first one was the automatic loading and the nice thing is on the last round the gun stays open. So I've done that hack maybe five, six thousand rounds ago. It did not affect the gun in any ways except that it will automatically chamber around when inserting a magazine. Some guns do it right from the get-go. This one didn't, so I had to do it. The other hack was to pull that slide release without needing a magazine to hammer it down. Oops. There we go. And that still works and still did not affect the gun in any ways. And the third hack while I'm at it, which is this one right here. Let's see if we can focus. This has been the best one ever, you know, to be able to hold the, uh, 
that little spring into the um, sear block so that was the best hack ever anyway this was a 10,000 round review of the SP01 I hope you enjoyed it and until next time as always see you guys